Now, I don't think there's any doubt in terms of the wrestling bubble, the wrestling universe, that AEW has some good things going for it. They certainly have generated some buzz, certainly generated a level of excitement around them. They're doing what you could call some big things and coming off of the heels of what was perceived and received by a lot of people as a great show, talking about All Out in Chicago, you would have expected them to come out and really try to follow up and really deliver a dynamite version of dynamite. And there were good things on this show. Yes, that's true. You may have had fun overall watching this. That's true. But if you can't find some legitimate things to question, provide feedback on, or criticize about this week's episode of Dynamite, then you are just a biased sheep. And I really don't have time for that crap. Like, you're going to be the reason, or a part of the reason, that this company never grows and improves and expands their audience and becomes a bigger thing. It's going to be on you. Because you get so caught up in your bias that you just want to take whatever the hell is given to you. Like AEW fans remind me a lot of dumb Bears fans. In the sense of, oh, Trubisky's not so bad, he was shit. And you knew it from year one. But because he was your dude and because he played for your team, like all of a sudden you tried to convince yourself of something that wasn't true. Like they tried to do with the eight years of the Jay Cutler experience. I could go on and on and on. I mean, flow of the show was odd. Choices of who they featured, who they didn't feature were odd to dumb at times. With some good mixed in for sure. And the main event, what the fuck was that? Help me understand this. You're coming off of a pay-per-view where you had CM Punk win his first match in seven and a half years. You have new acquisitions to the company like Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan just debuted at the pay-per-view. The Lucha Brothers are the new tag team champions. I could go on. And you decide you're going to start this show, this show, with a freaking match featuring one of those underutilized former WWE young talents like Malachi Black, who wasn't booked on the fucking pay-per-view Sunday, to take on 50-plus-year-old Dustin Rhodes. The fuck is the self-awareness here? Understand you don't always want to format your show the same, and I appreciate that. But it didn't work this week, my humble opinion. And before you sit there and say, well, Dustin Rhodes can really go and Malachi Black is great and these guys are going to really work well. Who gives a shit? It's not just always about the fucking moves, you idiots! But you got to push the young talent like Dustin Rhodes, right? Christ. Sitting there working a 50-50 competitive match, even though you've been booking him largely like a monster. As you kind of should have so far. I mean, there were botchy moments in this. The finish was crap. Like, this was not that great. This is a match that probably should have just been on the pay-per-view. Maybe had a little bit more time. You could have told a better story. But again, awareness to the circumstance and situation. The people aren't tuning in to watch Dustin Rhodes and Malachi Black. Give them something to hook them from the beginning. This shit ain't it, shit ain't it especially if you're trying to grow your freaking audience. At least the second segment had CM Punk. And that promo, let's be clear, was a little bit all over the place. Especially once Taz interjected. But you know, as he started mentioning like Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks, like, okay. Like, a chance for CM Punk to have some purpose outside of, yay, I'm happy to be back now. Gotta find something. Gotta give him a little bit of an edge here. You don't want to turn him into a villain or a heel because the crowd's not going to want to see that right now. They're too caught up in the goodwill and the good feelings, so don't go there. You don't have to go there. You don't need to go there. Don't go there. Um, so while the, the, the segment was a segment, at least it, it planted the seed in your mind like, oh yeah, give me Ricky Starks versus CM Punk. Give me Powerhouse Hobbs versus CM Punk. Now we're talking a little bit. And we should maybe not have... Uh, Ruby Soho talks so much. I don't know what the hell it is that people think is so great about Ruby. What is it? 
Because she has different color hair and she has tattoos. Okay, so what? Like, she had no comeback. No comeback at all for Britt Baker's catering line. A simple comeback you could come up with real time is like, oh, I don't know. Hey, bitch, you weren't even good enough to be in catering there. Or you had to come here because you didn't want to be in the big leagues where I would have beat your ass, bitch. You see how easy that was? Instead, Ruby was like, duh, I got nothing. Duh. And her match later on in the night against Jamie Hayter certainly wasn't very good. I always sloppy. The finish was bad. Yeah, you could blame Jamie Hayter for that. Yes, that's fair. But I don't get it. Like, just because somebody wasn't utilized a lot in WWE, you know, sometimes as many dumb, stupid-ass things as that company does, maybe sometimes there's a reason that they don't utilize some of these people because they realize they're not that fucking good. And I need to be proven to believe that Ruby Soho is any good. Because I didn't see it in WWE, and I certainly didn't see it here tonight. Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dante Martin. You know, whether this was a reaction to the hashtag Black Wrestling Draws or not, can't really say. Um, but it is interesting that, you know, if you want the black wrestlers to be able to draw, which they certainly can, like only wrestling would think that an American sporting landscape that is very heavily dominated by black superstar athletes in basketball, in football, you know, would sit there and primarily only push and give platforms to white wrestlers. Like, it's just really dumb. It's really backward. Like, I've talked about this before on this channel over the years, so don't need to go with that. But I thought it weird that, you know, like you did the Lee Moriarty getting a contract. We couldn't put that on Dynamite? Uh, anyways. If you're going to call him Powerhouse Hobbs and you need to book him like a powerhouse, he should not be working 50-50 competitive fucking matches against Dante Martin. He fucking shouldn't. Dante Martin means nothing right now in the grand scheme of things. You're going to say, well, that's personal. I don't mean it as personal. I'm talking about like kayfabe in, kayfabe in terms of the storytelling components of Dynamite on a weekly basis. Powerhouse Hobbs matters. Dante Martin does not. Let him get in a move or two. Let him get in a hope spot or two. And book the powerhouse like a fucking powerhouse. Him catching Dante at one point was a slick-ass looking spot, but of course they did what all these dumb dicks do in wrestling now. One move, too fucking many. I don't know what the hell happened, but clearly Hobbs got his bell rocked. Like, he's idiots now. And it's across the board. It's a scourge of wrestling. They can't do a match without going over the top rope at some damn point in time. Learn how to work, idiots! And that's what happens. Instead of keeping this simple... And letting the powerhouse be a powerhouse and having him go over strong when he was just mentioned by CM Punk a little bit earlier in the night. Like literally the segment before this. Ugh. Frustrating. But the Hobbs has something, man. Give him, give him, give him time and he can really be special. But there's no reason that they can't push him now. The Dan Lambert blasting an AEW Cornette gimmick is all right. I mean, you've kind of got a great value version of Cornette doing this, although Lambert is really good on the mic, and, and you know, best believe he could give most of the people on the AEW roster uh, some school and some lessons on how to cut an effective promo, especially as a heel. Uh, but I still think it's odd that he's aligned with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, and are they really going to do anything? Or are they just going to cosplay as Cornette? That's what I can't figure out. Apparently, Matt Hardy wants to challenge Orange Cassidy to a hair match. Whatever. Again, some of this shit that was on this show wasn't needed. You should be following up on All Out, perhaps building up to your Arthur Ashe show in a couple of weeks. That's it. That's what you fucking should be focusing on. And when you look at what happened in the main event, you see all this shit that you didn't need tonight. The structure, the flow of the show was bad, and the time management was atrocious. I wish they could have given more time to this shit on MJF shitting on Cincinnati. You know, here's what I will say. Like, the whole thing about talking about it's the Midwest because Cincinnati's mid. I guess it's dumb. I know a lot of you look at MJF maybe as a promo god. But sometimes he says some really fucking stupid shit that doesn't make any sense. 
Like, I understand the concept of trying to get cheap heat, but jackass. Cincinnati's not even the shittiest city in Ohio. That's Cleveland. You ever been to both places? You ever smelled Cleveland? Come on. Like, even Clevelanders know that. I mean, Christ almighty. But, you know, doing the whole thing with Linda Pillman being there at ringside and, you know, here comes Brian Pillman Jr. out in the his daddy's Bengals jersey. Like, this was great shit. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, well, it would have been nicer if you pushed Brian Pillman Jr. fucking months ago when the hell you should have. Uh, but it's better to give him the spot here than nothing at all. And this segment was fantastic. Anybody that's going to sit there and say, well, why did he say that about Brian Pillman Jr. and his family? You dumb dicks realize that Brian Pillman Sr. would have loved every fucking minute of this. This would have been what he said is what wrestling is supposed to be about. Go there, fucking go there. Don't get all pussyfied about this. It was totally in bounds and totally something that Pillman Sr. would have done and probably done better than MJF, frankly. Can't believe Cincinnati's mid. This reminds me of the old Sam White shit from over three decades ago. You know, there was a Bengals game. Fans were throwing shit on the field. He grabbed the PA mic and he said, You see anybody throwing this shit on the field? Get him the hell out of here! Point him out and get him the hell out of here! You don't live in Cleveland, you live in Cincinnati! That <laughs> went over a lot of your heads. Fuck you. But this MJF, Brian Pillman Jr. segment, like Brian Pillman got this opportunity, and by God, he was great. He made the most of it. MJF, you know, outside of some of the dumb shit he says, cool. The way they planted the seed a little bit of tension between MJF and Wardlow, fantastic. Loved all of this. This was great. Uh, did we need this FTR versus Dark Order tag match? I mean, were any of these guys booked on the pay-per-view? No. Had they really mattered that much? Like, I even forgot the pinnacle was fucking, fucking the thing, actually, at this point. Um, I'm also trying to figure out how it's called the Dark Order when the combined complexion of everybody in the goddamn group is Seamus. Bunch of potato salad with raisins in it, eating motherfuckers. But you're going to call them the Dark Order? Did we need this on the show? No! So for those of you that are going to rant and rave, and legitimately so, about why didn't this get more time, or why didn't we see some of these people, hey, Miro's your TNT champion. It's not a mid-card title. You're right, Tony Khan. It's not a mid-card title because you don't even treat it like a mid-card title because you don't even put it on fucking TNT every goddamn week. Lucha Brothers just won the tag titles. Nowhere to be found. Like, what the hell? It took us over an hour and a half over an hour and a half to get the single biggest thing that was coming out of All Out, which were the debuts to, in AEW of Adam Cole and Brian Danielson. It took us over an hour and a half to get there. First, I got to say, hilarious to me that Adam Cole didn't even reference the Good Brothers when he was talking about Kenny Omega and, and the Bucks of Sucks. That was fantastic. I'm like, Adam Cole hates Carl Anderson because he knows Carl Anderson fucking sucks. I can't imagine calling Tony Schiavone a nerd when you're with the Bucks. Like, did you see what the Bucks dressed like tonight? That was some straight clown school shit. Like, whatever. You know, and Kenny Omega, you know, it's almost like he had Adam Cole say something, which was okay, and then he immediately went to being a background player. Seems less than ideal, but again, you got 300 bajillion fucking people on your damn roster. Yeah, I got to give everybody some time, right? And eventually, Brian Danielson comes out, and you know what? I'm with him. Fuck your stupid ratings, because the stupid rankings that you have say Orange Cassidy is the number one contender. Who the hell wants to see that? Got to go where you got to go and set up this match at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is clearly where you're heading in terms of direction at this point. To those that are saying, well, I wish I want Adam Hangman Page to do it. Fuck him. He's not there. I don't care what the reason is. He, legitimate personal reasons be damned. Like, Hangman Page isn't there right now. All Out could have been set up for him. He's not there. You got to move on and do what you can do in the moment. You got to capitalize on the opportunity. You got to capitalize on the momentum now. You didn't do a very good job of that tonight, in my opinion, in general. But fuck it. Like, I saw Brian Danielson and I'm like, 
you know, you look at him and then you look at Omega and you're like, I could take Danielson a little more seriously. Like he comes across as a little bit of a bigger star. Although I will call out, I mentioned this on Twitter during the show and you fo follow the show on Twitter. I wish some of these guys would actually wear some of their damn merch. Like you understand that it's wrestling and it's a business and the business is to make money, right? Wouldn't you want to rock some of your own shit so that way you could actually, I don't know, sell your merchandise, promote your merchandise, get your merchandise FaceTime in front of a million viewers or maybe slightly more than that? What the hell are these guys thinking? Like even Brian Danielson. Like are the, the four for 20 Foot Locker white tees selling out like crazy at the merch stand there in Cincinnati? Come on, guys. Be businessmen. Do business. Sometimes it's okay that you change up the look and you do a little different. You don't always feel like a walkie John Cena-like uh, t-shirt and merch billboard. But, you know, try and sell your stuff. <laughs> um, Omega versus Brian Danielson. You can see the crowd really wants it. Like, that's the direction you got to go. No real complaints about that. Other than the fact of, it shouldn't take an, over an hour and a half to get to this point. I was dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Oh, and I know some of you are in the launch position, ready to defend it, because you'll pathetically defend anything. No, stop it. You know there was some good on the show. There absolutely was. And there's a really dumb, stupid crap. Stop glossing over it. Stop making excuses and justifications. Stop being a sheep. Call it out. You care about this company as much as you claim to. And you got to talk about some of the bad too, because that's the only way they're going to get better. It's like in the working world. If you only bring up what somebody does well, eventually you're going to get a diminishing return out of the things they do well. And it's only going to lead to them getting worse and worse in terms of some of those negative, like weak areas or their opportunity areas. And God put a corporate spin on it. Stop it. Because some of this bullshit they did tonight, like FTR versus Dark Order, did not need that at all. Frankly, could have done without Ruby Soho, but you did just have her debut on Sunday. Made sense that she's on the show. I agree with that. You know, with some of the shit that you did, these small little things that took away time from the main event that was supposed to be a big deal, like Moxley's the hometown guy. Suzuki, oh my God, Suzuki's here. Now, it would have been nice all this other bullshit that you did that didn't matter, that you'd have been bothered to set up your freaking main event by, I don't know, giving a little background on John Moxley and his life in Cincinnati. Or introducing your audience for a couple of minutes to who Minoru Suzuki is and why the hell this is such a big deal. History between him and Moxley. What Suzuki represents. All of these things. No, don't sit there and say, you could go look it up online. That's fucking dumb. That's not the fan's job to do that. That's AEW's job to do that. And just from a basic flow and feel standpoint, you could have really teased up this main event to be a whole lot bigger than it actually ended up being. But you know what? Because they, since they did such a terrible job of managing time on tonight's show, I'm glad they didn't promote this like as a big thing because it sure fucking wasn't. It's really pathetic when it feels like more than half of your main event match on the show featuring two guys where you're going to have people say, well, I wish that match was longer and it could have it in a pay-per-view. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Like the pay-per-view that you just had Sunday that should have been Moxley versus Suzuki. This is fucking stupid. I'm wrong with putting Moxley in the main event here as a hometown guy. That makes sense to me. Cool. Send the people home happy. Have a good, feel-good type of moment. But you had fans hyping this up. It was going to be something big. Like, they all look foolish right now. This was not what it should have been. I know these two guys could do a whole lot better. We've seen these two guys wrestle a style that's a whole lot better than this crap. This was rushed and largely interrupted by the picture-in-picture -picture view. That was stupid. There's so many things you could have cut from this damn show to give this main event another five to seven minutes that would have made a big-ass difference. I just did not like how they presented the show this week. Marks would start off this shit with a match, talking about the show. You need to start off with something that ties into what happened on the pay-per-view Sunday. That's just basic one-on-one shit. You can sit there and have 
even a minute or two of time talking about Matt Hardy and Orange Cassidy takes away from, hey, let's do a little thing about the Lucha Brothers, or let's have Miro cut a promo, or let's do this, or let's do any other goddamn things. Another week where you basically had one woman's match, and that's it. You know, I want to talk about black wrestlers draw. Well, you've got Jade Cargill, who we just saw in Chicago on Saturday, Sunday, got a pretty big, goddamn big pop. She was associated with St Shaq in that storyline a couple of months ago, but she's coming out of that Battle Royals where she had one of the storylines coming out of that, and there's nothing. Nothing. And don't give me that shit. Well, Rampage on Friday. That's Friday. Today is Wednesday. This is the first chance to touch base with the audience after the damn pay-per-view. You need to come swinging for the fences. You need to deliver the goods. This wasn't it. It wasn't it. We have seen this company do better. We know they can do better. Stop letting the recency bias of the magnificence of how much you love to give this company reach arounds for the shit they do cloud you from seeing like just how much of a wet fart some parts of this show were tonight. People being featured that don't matter. Too much 50-50 crap. The placement of the big stuff that was really supposed to matter was weird, bad, dumb, and ultimately culminating in a main event that pretty much pissed everybody off. Sound like another company you know about? Oh, oh but AEW is so different. Oh, shut up. They are not. We'll see what the ratings are, the viewership numbers are for this week's show. Personally, they don't deserve a million viewers. They'll probably get a little bit over that, maybe like 1.1, and they'll do a decent rating in 1849. But, you know, with some of the names that you brought in, this was supposed to be something more than kind of the high end of status quo. Um, you know, kind of getting caught up in the, hey, we got the big names. Look at the new shiny toys we got. <clears throat> That's nice. Now you got to figure out what the hell to do with them. They could have done better, so much better with tonight's episode. Disappointing. This show, if you want to say anything, is mid. This week's Dynamite was mid at best.